Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This could be a very important video because we're going to go over the subject of the summon sigil and in particular the black ISO market and, and really talking about the fact of like, look, it's been just over a year since the introduction of this little type of, well, let's say like monthly membership type scheme and has it really been good? Has it evolved? Has it separated and segregated? What has it really done for the community and as well progression and your own little MCOC career. Now when the Summoner Sigil first came out I had these high hopes that it would address a lot of things when it comes to grind like if you paid you got a reduced time with the grind like say you got more battle chips or gold similar way with Summoner Appreciation you're able to have those type of things and to a degree there were early hopes but unfortunately those were dashed so yes a 20% experience boost a weekly gold circle quest, faster quest energy recharge, the new exclusive title, a special solo event, access to the black ice and market, and a 25% increase in inventory capacity. Now of these things they were just quality of life improvements or improvements in general that the player base wanted but obviously this was stuck behind a paywall. And like I said the thing that I really wanted to see better of was things like you get to accumulate more battle chips more items like gold, like a higher percentage of getting the threshold of gold, and other things that really feel to me more of a membership booster. But there were things that I really liked, and I really liked the access to the Black ISO market, because effectively it's treating it like a, not a library card, but a, yeah, we'd well, like a library card, or like a blockbuster video card, if anybody remembers those back in the, the uh, early noughties, where you're able to grab something and improve something. Your improvement would be your life enrichment based on watching the movie that obviously you wouldn't have to pay for, but obviously it would still be kept in your mind, as it were. But in any case, none of that mumbo jumbo. The fact is, has this really delivered? And as you know, the answer for me is yes and no. Yes, it's a case this has been a really good asset, but at the same time, no, it hasn't. The Summoner Sigil, which is a paid service, should really feel like an evolution, and especially that should go with the meta changes, the desire desirability of certain things changing as well. And yes, there has been stuff that occasionally, not every month, but occasionally, Caban will put in things like these special Cavalier Crystals. Which, but unfortunately, you can only have access to the one, especially when it comes to the early access. And as well, would there be anything of like a little bit of a reduction in these with that inflated cost of 300 units? But let's face it, most of the time you're going to pick up a 3 star. And the same thing obviously with the other one where, you know, you're more than likely to pick up a 2 star. Which doesn't really feel like a fair economy. The featured 5 star edition was nice. It was nice to have that 11k charge of the 5 star shards and does feel like it's relatively good value. And as well the trading crystal can be good at times but it's ultimately left trollish. So those are the four main things that I can really think of and obviously I can see at the moment that have been added in that are quite good and do feel like it's a nice little exclusive. It's not too much of an advantage over free to play players which we'll talk about in a moment but still doesn't feel like for the money you pay that this has evolved especially over the case of one year and especially in some countries where you're not paying $9.99 it's a case obviously in the UK we're paying £9.99 which obviously works out a lot more in uh, dollars now I'm not going to get into like a currency war type thing but I'm just pointing out obviously um, the value of things and value of money is very important. Now going down the legendary crystal was the other substantial thing that was being put in but the value of it the more that I think about it especially for end game players doesn't actually ring true to be a good thing. Since this was implemented I actually see less value in it as we continue on. Legendary crystal basically says that you've got to take two and a half of your four stars and basically absorb them to get a chance of getting a five star and that can be quite good. However though, the issue is that when you come to an end game player's perspective and you're low on ISO, the best thing that you can really do is to, well, pop open a 4 star and grab those 24 tier 5 ISO, if I'm right, I'm pretty certain it's tier 5, it's not tier 4, it must be tier 5 ISO, which obviously then is going to be absorbed into leveling up champions and ranking up, ranking, well not ranking up, leveling up champions and getting them further up the leveling up scale, because let's face it, at the end of the day, when it comes to 6 stars, which a lot of endgame players are now leveling up, ISO is not that easy to come by, especially when you need a lot of it, a hell of a lot of it, so the value of this 
even on the face of it, it does look quite fun. I'm actually now coming to the conclusion that it's really not, especially when you need that ISO and you need it quickly. So the question would be where I'm at currently in game compared with say uh, someone else that is free to play because obviously I do put money into the game on a monthly basis whether I'm buying the unit deal or I'm buying the summon sigil itself. What am I getting an advantage against uh, someone that's free to play? Well if I went for the featured fire star which I've done there I then put myself up to the mercy of the RNG which I guess we're both doing the same except for I've got 4,000 extra five star shards. The same thing with the trading crystal, like what advantage does that really kind of give for the trading crystal perspective? Not a lot. It does give ISO, which I guess gives me some sort of advantage in a level up scheme, but it's not substantial. The other two things that are at uh, the whim of the RNG and anything when it comes to that is uh, the Cavalier crystal and the Grandmaster crystal respectively. Which, let's face it, they're at the whim of RNG. So I could be picking up two three stars. So what kind of advantage do I do I get? Yes, if I get a five star, then that is luck. But ultimately, I throw my whim at the RNG. Yes, health potion, I could spend on that. The other things are just nice kind of convertible things and handy for YouTubing because then I'm able to get better crystals and faster. So there is somewhat an advantage to build up to that where a free-to-play player would only wouldn't be able to convert and would have to save up so i guess that's the only other thing and yeah if they actually decide to do four uh four thousand well it can't be like four um like two two point five um four star uh, champions being open then theoretically they would have more of an advantage if i went the legendary crystal route because one four star that i would more than likely get from the legendary crystal is not equivalent to uh to maybe what they would get from iso back so I'm not really on the face of it, and yeah, there's the tier 2 alpha catalyst fragments, but there's the glory store. So there is a lot more things that just don't really tip the scales of a huge advantage. It just means I'm able to convert more quicker to put myself at the whim of the crystal opening luck god. But here's the thing, when the Summoner Sigil does become of value, when you compare the free-to-play players of progressing rosters and progressing gameplay and progressing careers, you're then able to see more of a divide between those that are free-to-play and those that do spend. And especially with Summoner Sigil, because you get reductions. Not a huge reduction on the Carbonadium Mastery Core, but 50 units is 50 units. And not to mention the fact that there are elements of conversion. So if you want to kind of feel yourself getting the Ultimate Crystal and stuff where you're spending the, the Prem Shards to get things like 3 stars, which are just there behind me, uh, or just there in front of me, then the fact is at least you're getting something from that. And there are some good things of uh, of selectors as well. So it feels like more it's a, it's a leg up program from them. But the end game player perspective, as I said, if I compare where I am from a, an end game that uh, occasionally spends, not an excessive amount, I don't like to spend excessive amounts, but the fact is I do spend. But if you compare it off to someone that's free to play, and also an end game player, then the fact is, does the Summoner Sigil actually prove to be anything of a an advantage? Which you kind of think, are you paying for an advantage or just to kind of like get further ahead? Well, no. In this case, as we've kind of seen, it seems to be more that you're you're converting quicker, but it's not exactly going to be the best thing. Like uh, the way that, as I explained, if you have the legendary crystal which is here, then you're utilizing. Four, um, four thousand, uh, four star shards as well as obviously the half of the the next one. So you're losing out on the ISO, which a free to play player would probably just go like, right, I'll just pop that open. The same thing could be said that okay, well you're converting as well to get more five star shards. But again, same problem that if you were converting all those four star shards over, then you're not popping them open for for ISO. So when it comes to like the end game player's perspective and what this actually gives back for people that spend, you're not really making any more of an advantage over the situation. Now going back to the list, there doesn't really seem to be anything that stands out of value. There's only two other things I can really point out. One that we're going to really, well, poo-poo in a second, and one main thing. So let's poo-poo the thing that is there that does seem to be of value. And the thing we have to unfortunately poo-poo is the Golden Circle quest now why we're poo-pooing this is because kabam have included incursions and incursions is the point of like it is the leg up thing that is allowing people to gather a large amount of gold which obviously on the refresh does actually refresh uh, a lot sooner 
than when it comes to that particular quest. So effectively, you're only really gaining an e like 125,000 extra gold that could not be grabbed from doing incursions or arena grinding. You know, you really pick and choose uh, the scheme of things with there. But like, look, there's there's such a high chunk of gold that you pick up from this, which again undermines the kind of free to play versus cavalier, which I was talking about, or end game player uh, that does spend. So again, that really doesn't serve as much as an added extra. Yes, it can be done in a very short space of time, but it's it's not it's not good, especially if you are paying if you're paying extra for this particular service within the game or membership within the game. Which leaves the only thing that's relatively good about this that would in any case give the player that buys this against say that someone's free to play that slight leg up is saying right well through the grind of just the daily basis you're able to pick up um, 1,005 star shards, one five star signature stone crystal and a good amount of units. What's that? 45, uh, that's 60, that's 75, that's 80 units. So if my maths served me right and I counted that correct, 80 units. Um, yeah, full energy refill. There's some extra nice stuff here, but it's like, well, a lot of this stuff you could really grind out really quickly through the medium of doing arena. But look, if you're not in the scheme of doing arena and want something, you know, for doing next to nothing, then I guess this is what £9.99 gets you or $9.99 gets you. Which obviously if you are concerned with like a comparable thing, then it's like saying, well, look, you know, for two times the four ninety nine, you could get uh, you can get that stuff. You get two of those, 206 star shards, good amount of stuff, yep, some value there. Or if theoretically, that's for the value of 275 units. So I suppose there's something of an added bonus to uh, what you theoretically get from a values perspective. But when it comes to, as I said, that kind of, look, are we getting an advantage as someone who pays versus someone who doesn't, and as well free to play, there's not really much of a, I'm any anything extra for that particular thing. I think the big take home from this video is that it's just looking at the value of this, whether or not you as a player feel like there's good enough value to look at things like the conversion, because theoretically that's what it is. It's a quick method to quick conversion with the Black ISO market if you are an end game player. If you're a lower player, you are getting the advantage of those selectors and obviously building your rosters and your MCC careers in various different ways of where you want to take it and go, whether or not you want to do things like the story quest, as well when it comes to like the variants and preparing for things like a variant four, for example, which obviously requires one stars, two stars, three stars, four stars, and obviously ongoing with that. However, though, the value needs to be there and the value needs to be seen. So whether or not this is a good opportunity for Kabam with a one year, yes, okay, there have been slight little additions to the uh, Black Osa market, but at the same time, is it really worth buying, especially from an end game player's perspective, or those that are really hardcore end game whales that would look on the sigil going like, okay, well, I guess I just get to convert the five star featured, which I guess I need, uh, yes, there's some conversion with the four stars that I get loads of, but I have no value for, but as well, I need to get, you know, more five stars. I need to get more ISO because that's what I feel a lot of the whales of, uh, all the kind of like top alliances are really saying at the moment is we need more ISO. So the sigil needs to evolve. And as well with that golden circle quest that needs to evolve as well with more opportunities to gather more gold because incursions are given out more and, as I said, and as I've shown, there's not really a huge advantage except for the solo event from being a player that is free to play versus that which is a spender of the game, even a light spender. Even me who buys the sigil, uh, you know, I think I've bought it this in the last 12 months, 10 months out of, out of 12. And, you know, I could say that whilst I've not been spending, I've not really lost out by the means of it. So there needs to be something there that is kind of like a, a nice tasty thing, like more signature stones available. You know, um, am I going to make a huge gain by adding 10 signature stones to, uh, to Beardo? You know, are you going to feel punished by that? I doubt it. Um, is it going to be more punishable or kind of feel like it's, it's punished more if you are having a silver surfer and adding 10 signature stones on for that means propels your prestige? 
Maybe. Who knows? But obviously, those are my thoughts on that. What are your thoughts on the Summoner Sigil a year on? Would you think it's something that uh, does feel like an advantage still for those that, that spend? And obviously, uh, the rich get richer, the whales get more whalier, and they make more advantage. What are your thoughts? Put it in the comment section down below. And there we go. That has been the video. Thanks very much for checking it out. Check out some other content up here. Check out some other stuff down here. M is doing a series called Marvel A to Z. Go and check it out on Rich's Realm over there. Whilst we wait for Marvel Realm of Champions to be released and any more bloody trailers and gameplay and stuff, that would be great. But uh, until that point, we just have to wait longer.